it is the most dangerous problem, nasty little bugger, that burrows under the scale of a fish and feeds on the fluids from the fish. Well, hello. Come right on in. You're at Father Fish. We have not talked about the major illness problem that hobbyists have with their tropical fish. It is the most common problem. It is the most dangerous problem. It is the one that is fraught with all kinds of advice as to how to deal with it. What I'm talking about is ick. The parasite ick. The little tiny bug that burrows under the scale of a fish or burrows into the fish if this fish does not have scales, like clown loaches, for example, and feeds on the fluids from the fish. It goes all the way inside the fish. It's in the surface in that epidermal layer, but it is completely inside the fish. The white spot that you see from the ick means it has been there for at least a day and is producing waste. The white spot is waste. It will last in the fish for two to three days feeding. It will then emerge and drop to the bottom, will find a partner, mate, and will have 248 babies. They hatch in 12 hours. Once they hatch, they will remain in the substrate for another 12 hours. So one day after that adult has dropped into the sand, their new babies emerging, 250 of them, searching for a host. They're pretty good swimmers and they're pretty quiet. <laughs> they're tiny, they're indetectable, the fish do not notice them. They land on the slime coat of the fish. They burrow under the slime coat and with a tweezer-like mouth part, they separate the scale and slide under. Or as in the case of clown loach or other kinds of fish that do not have scales, they simply burrow into the skin and they begin feeding. Now, that's day four. By day six, they have dropped off. By day seven, 250 times the total number that were attached to the fish is the next number. That is a number that exceeds 5,000 parasites. So in one week, there are potentially 5,000 parasites looking for fish to eat on. That is a death knell. Once that happens, and once they become attached and begin feeding, that fish cannot be saved. It's too late. So that becomes then one of the major issues with ick. It must be detected early. If it is not detected early, it will absolutely devastate your entire aquarium of fish. So, how do you do this? Well, you're watching your fish all the time. You're looking at them and you want to make sure you look at them at least once a day and try to spot all of them. In my tank, that really can't be done. I've got over a hundred fish in this tank. How often do you think I see a hundred fish? Oh, maybe once a week. We're going to get to why that's not as terrible as it sounds. You want to watch and look. If you see one spot on one fish, don't do anything. Except be very diligent, very careful, and look very, very deliberately to try to find a second spot. Once you do, once you find that second spot, then you know you have a problem. 
One spot may be nothing, may not be significant at all. Two spots, you need to get on this right away. So what do you do? There are so many recipes, I call them recipes for disaster, because almost none of them solve the problem. There are basically two solutions. The solution that the fish farmer uses is different from the solution that the hobbyist uses. And here's the reason. The fish farmer is dealing with tens of thousands of gallons of water. The hobbyist, you, are dealing with 10, 20, 50, 100 tops gallons of water. Very different. Very different. Put a heater in the tank if there is not one in there already and raise the temperature. Raise it right away. If your heater is in the tank and it's set on 75, turn it up to 87. It will take hours, maybe half a day, for the heater to raise the temperature in that tank to 87 degrees. Once that has happened, leave it there. Leave it there for three days. If the ick is falling off the fish, then the temperature can begin to be brought down. But don't do it until there are no more ick parasites showing on the fish. Now, the reality is the heat does not kill the parasite. It causes it to become inactive. Why is that? Because the ick parasite is a cold water parasite and it cannot function adequately in very warm water. So it simply drops down, waits for the water to get colder, and it'll come right back up again. Aha! So it is important then to understand the life cycle of the, of the parasite in order to know when to bring the temperature back down. The parasite can be dormant for no more than four days. If it does not find a host, in four days it dies. Once the temperature is raised and the ick parasite falls off, wait for four days. You can begin bringing it down slowly. Don't bring it below 82 degrees. The ick parasite will die and the fish will be relieved of the stress of that nasty little bugger. So, what does the fish farmer do? The fish farmer begins adding salt. He adds salt at the rate of a teaspoon per 10 gallons. And then the next day, he doubles that. That's a lot of salt. He may take an entire bag of rock salt and dump it in his pond. It's a lot of salt. Now, I should say, before we go any further, if the ick is in a pond, he will not treat it, because to do so is to wipe out the pond. If it gets in the pond, it's written off. There is no solution for that because anything that's done will kill the entire life cycle in the pond and the fish that are in there depend entirely on that life cycle. If, however, the ick is found in a vat, he'll begin dumping salt into the vat. That means the fish are being hand-fed and they're in a situation where water is being changed on a pretty regular basis so he'll begin dumping salt in there. He may be dealing with a thousand gallons, maybe even 5,000 gallons, but it's a relatively limited amount. And at a teaspoon per 10 gallons, it doesn't take more than a bag of salt to reach the level that's needed in order to be able to stop the yick. He watches it carefully, makes sure it's working, 
may add more salt if need be. And in three to four days, if the ick has dropped off the fish, not returned by day five, then he will flush the system with fresh water. There's one more thing I want to mention. I noticed in my tank, in this tank, I noticed I brought some neons in. Now they came from a show and they all looked really good. They came out of a hobbyist's tank. I had no reason to believe there was a problem. The day after I put them in there, I noticed one spot, one white spot of what obviously was ick. One of these little guys. I watched day two, it was still there. Day three, it was gone. Day four, nothing. Day five, nothing. Day six, nothing. It did not come back. And this is the reason why. And it is the reason why a natural aquarium like this one will almost never have a problem with parasites. The tank is full of microfauna. 50% of all microfauna can be categorized as parasites. That does not mean they are parasitizing fish. They are rather being parasites on each other. So the eat parasite fell to the bottom. It may have been caught and eaten right there. If it hit the bottom and it bred, and the babies came up out of the water as soon as they did, they may have been eaten while they were even still in the sand. So the tank itself stopped the infestation simply by virtue of the fact that there is a maximum amount of biomaterial, biodiversity in the tank, protecting it from parasites. So there you have it. Dealing with ick is very, very simple, but it also is very, very important to be diligent about it, to get on it immediately, the day, the hour, the minute you see it. Again, not just one, but two. If you see two spots, you know you have an infestation. If you see one, it is a simple matter to begin cranking the temperature up. It hurts nothing other than the parasite. I hope that's helped. And I hope that simplifies and clarifies exactly how to deal with this horrible, horrible problem that so many people suffer from. Don't go running to the store to buy a chemical. If you don't have a heater, get one today. Get one right now. You can order one on Amazon, but have a heater. Have it available even if it's not plugged in. When you need it, you need it. And you need it right then when you need it, not the next day. So do that and prepare yourself. And you will never need to suffer the indignity of finding half of your fish dead and dying in the tank from a disease that you didn't catch in time and didn't know how to deal with when it came upon you. I wish you well. Please join us on our Discord channel. It is such a wonderful opportunity and way to be able to, to meet people and chat about what you're doing get solutions to your problems, fix things up, find wonderful resources, and be able to share the joy of what you're doing. Isn't that just the most delightful thing to be able to do, to share what you're excited about? You can actually have your own channel with only your pictures on it that everybody will be able to see. So join us. Plants, we now have every one of my favorite plants, except for two. And I'm working on them. They're not commonly available through dealers, 
but I'm growing them out. I'm going to keep it a secret what they are right now. But when they're out, you'll know and everybody will want them. But the top 40 plants, my favorite 40 plants, are now available at our store. Links below. Check it out. You can buy 16 bunches of stem plants, four to five plants in a bunch, for 59 bucks plus, only $10 shipping, enough to fill a 20-gallon tank. So, bless you all. Love you all. Bye for now.